bacon sarnia. Bacon oh. sarnia or um, bacon and egg and sausages and fried potatoes and beans. That's lovely. Duality, if there is such a thing, which of course there isn't really, it's seeing that there is no self. Not understanding it, not knowing about it, not reading about it, it's seeing it. Can't, we can't even say it's experiencing it, it's not an experience. But that's the heart of it, there is no self. I say, you know, everything else that we chatter on about, I chatter on about, particularly about it, um, you know comes out of that, really. Mm. However, if you don't like that, there's many other different places you could start. Can I, I don't know, can I t tell you the um, story of Muktananda and the miracle of the cucumber? Because I'm not sure if I've ever told that on camera. Okay. I was told this, but the, the point of the story really, I was told this by a devotee of Muktananda, but I was told it, you know, in a, in a tone of absolute awe and respect, okay. So um, Muktananda apparently took a uh, great interest in the kitchens and what went on and so forth. Right. And he came down one day and the way I remember the story is that uh, you know, he didn't like the way the cucumber was being sliced. So he said, no, 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 you know, new cucumber, you must do it like this, and you must get 28 slices from each cucumber like this. So he sort of cut along there, presumably at some kind of magical super speed, right? And yeah. they counted the slices, you know, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. 27 slices. 27 slices, Muktananda has made a mistake, oh God, and then he turns over the knife, and there is the 28th slice on the other side of the knife. And the, the, the story was told to me in, I mean I'm exaggerating for comic effect obviously, but it was kind of told to me in that kind of reverential tone, you know, yeah. this master who can never make a mistake. You save the cat moment, you know, as the, in the movies, it's the moment where the cat is saved in the tree. It normally will happen a, a couple of minutes, or 10 or 15 minutes into every movie, they'll have a save the cat moment for a character to show you that they're a good guy. You know, yeah. they say something clever, or but it's like that kind of thing. It's it's myth, almost. It's And there, he's made a mistake, and then the knife is turned over. Yeah, the and big revealed, reveal. Yeah. The big reveal, the missing slice of cucumber. But I could relate to that at the time, that sort of sense of awe and mystery about these beings. Yeah. Sometimes I hear this, that this is ordinary, but it's not, it's not ordinary. Oh, it is ordinary, yeah. But it might, is it though, I mean, from my perspective, when oh, every single tiny story about reality, yeah. that you believe 
it's true and that you have finite amount of years to live yeah. and which is the body has finite amount of years to live but every kind of story that you've ever had is gone that's a traumatic traumatic sort of sensory thing to not have all the anchors that you're used to having it, in the yes world. it can be I think it might depend on how addicted an individual is to their stories because the more addicted we might be to a particular story of let's say meaning and purpose and the more of a shock it will be to see perhaps it will be to see through it yeah but, I mean not everybody is particularly addicted to very convincing stories about reality anyway so maybe then it wouldn't be much of a shock but it is unbelievably I mean obviously it's kind of unbelievably ordinary because it's kind of like what you know what Jack or Fred or Tom is used to so of course it's ordinary and I mean a thought that's just struck me is in a way the only time it doesn't sort of seem ordinary maybe here is when I'm having a conversation like this with someone mm -hmm. and that someone is describing their their reality, their perspective, if you like, and then something in here kind of recognises, oh yeah, 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 maybe, yeah, that used to be, that used to be me. My, one of the earliest meetings that I ever gave about this, somebody accused me, I think perhaps rather angrily actually, of being nihilistic. Yeah. And along the road since then, I've been accused of being nihilistically, nihilistic regularly, if not often. Yeah. And I think this is a huge misunderstanding. But there is also, you know, the, the, the nothing that is seen is a, you know, it is a kind of full nothing. A full emptiness. It's is it a um, it's, is it more no thing, no as a nothing as opposed to nothing. It's no thing. It's in our unfathomable all things. Do, you, do is that is that just <laughs> all and any of that will do. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think what can, what can happen quite often, you know, I talk to, communicate with quite a few people about this, is that there can be a kind of initial seeing, and that initial seeing, we describe it any way we like, but we could describe it as seeing an emptiness, or seeing emptiness. And it is really kind of just empty. Um, later... There can be, or perhaps it can maybe at the same you know, no rules could be at the same time. Then there can be a seeing of a fullness in that emptiness. And the thing that I find interesting, partly in terms of, you know, this character, what what apparently happened for this character, but also talking to quite a lot of other people as well, is that seeing of emptiness that can happen in itself, just emptiness, doesn't seem to bring an end to the seeking person or the seeking mind. The seeking goes on after that, there's something about it, there's some kind of something that knows that that's incomplete. But to me that's what that image, that metaphor is about, you know, your head is in the lion's mouth or in the tiger's mouth, you know, it expresses, you know, like the power of this, once this has got you, it's yeah. a bit of a story of course, but once mm. this has got you, it is far more powerful than you are, so you will go wherever the lion or the tiger drags you. Yeah. I think the end of that, um, quotation from uh, Ramana as I heard it or read it was your t your head is in the tiger's mouth and there is no escape mm. it's like once non-duality has seized you that's it and I mean I can remember you know in my story in inverted commas a kind of absolute desperate kind of seeking an absolute, you know, absolute conviction that there was something, it's like, just beyond where I was looking, mm -hmm. just beyond, and if only I could look hard enough, you know, I would see it. Yeah.
it's kind of fairly natural for the character to uh, you know construct stories like that. Yeah, and that just and the more going. intense there is that feeling, you know, that if only I try hard enough, I must be able to see it. The more of a shock maybe it is when it is seen and it's realised that the thing that was looking for it all the time was, I'm going to say, was the problem. But that's not a good description because it's not really a problem. It just happens to be there. But, you know, that shock of, oh my God, you know, what I was looking for, I could never possibly find. And sort of understanding all those incredibly infuriating Zen sayings and, you know, other gnomic proverbs and things like that from beings of great wisdom, you know, suddenly kind of, oh yes, oh yeah. But what's ever changing is experience. Yeah. And what we're talking about is not experience. It sounds a bit pompous, but what we're talking about is, if you like, that in which experience arises. And I know that sounds horrifically dualistic, because now it sounds like there's two things. There's experience and that which is arises in. But I can't help that, because that's just the nature of language. But it's experience which is ever-changing, and of course it goes on ever-changing. But this isn't an experience. What we're talking about seeing here is not an experience. So it is unchanging in that sense. I mean, some people describe it as, you know, like the background. It's like... And I've heard one person, um, I think it was um, Ian McNay actually, said, is it like um, like a gestalt in a way where the background comes into the foreground? And that's not a bad description because usually experience is in the foreground. And if experience is happening in something, which of course it isn't really, but let's pretend it is, then that something is in the background and suddenly it comes into the foreground. This is all highly misleading, but it's no more misleading than any other way no, of describing this. Yeah, well, see, I'm, I'm curious about that. I mean, the, the, uh, any kind of sense I have of this room is that it's all encompassing. Yes. So the course. foreground is the background, and the background is the, the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Everything that I've said up to now is... Of course. No, I'm not, not I'm Because we're using use, language. Yeah, and I'm only using the back about, and not, and not, I'm only trying to uh, uh, relate. <laughs> it's almost like everything I ever say or write about this, I feel is a hostage to fortune because it is an invitation to somebody to phone me up or email me or come to one of my meetings and say, you know, you said that and that's completely dualistic. Yeah. To which the only answer is, yes, I'm sorry, I am speaking using words. Yeah. <laughs> words are irretrievably dualistic. Yeah. So of course there's not really any background or foreground in which experiences or separate things happen. Of course not. It's just a way of trying to describe a shift. And of course there isn't really a shift either. But nevertheless we have to talk. Well we don't have to but we've chosen to. <laughs> chosen I mean we to, could yeah. just, just looking at the time now, we could just go off to the pub and you know, have egg and chips. <laughs> Sounds lovely. It's not even a sack of pepper. You know, it's not even a wave. In the that, vast ocean, yeah. This, no. Yeah. No. It's not even... It's no, it's a lovely image, image, that, isn't it? A wave in a vast image, but no, it's not it's even not, that. It's not no, even no, that. No, it's non-existent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a wave's not a bad metaphor, but it's only a metaphor. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not even an inhale of a fucking breath. Yeah. Yeah, this is non-existent and it doesn't need to be in existence. Yeah. So this idea of duality and non-duality, right? Um, and it's basically, there's here and then there's an idea of a there. 
and um, so there's here and that's the only thing really we, we can talk about otherwise we will launch into a story and even but like you know we launch into some sort of a story about um, getting to here or moving past here getting we, to where we already are hmm? getting to where we already are yeah yeah so there's here drinking tea with no cake no it's coffee and coffee I'll and book, I'll just get your book I've time. got scones but, if you want no I'm good thank you Um. There's here, and the, the predominant perspective of the world is uh, we're in a world, and in, a, in the, let's say it's the vast of humans, the human predominant perception of the world is we are in a world, and it's 2019. Richard and Frank are having a conversation with the camera. Frank's come from Ireland, and that's the blah blah blah, that's the predominant view. Then it seems to be, it comes a point where the satisfaction with all the stories that you've heard in your life seems to, the, too many cracks seem to appear in everything. That, um, too many cracks seem to appear in all stories and all things, including, for me now, um, yourself. And so then... We, I stumble upon a non, this non, a, a, an alternative perspective of what this is. Is it an alternative perspective? No. Okay. No, it's not a perspective. No, but perception. We have to use words, don't we? I'd say it's not a perception either, but we have to use words. Yeah. So if we're going to talk about it, you could say that. I wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't say it is an alternative perception, but we can have that if we want to. What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> what would you say about the ramble that I said? <laughs> Words fail me. I mean, one of the phrases that people use that comes to me is it's a different way of seeing, mm -hmm. but which is also highly inaccurate. But nevertheless, I mean, I, you can see words fail. It's a, it's a switch. That's not accurate either, but you could say that. It's a switch. You know, it's a switch from seeing this and that to just, there, there isn't a word, is there, that for this and that together as one. This is the park where, uh, if you walk through it, um, with you, of course, liberation happens. This is this is the liberation park, isn't it? Guaranteed. Guaranteed. But yeah. Unbelievably expensive. show in town really though too isn't it sorry yeah. it's the only show in town yeah I think that's why one of the reasons that you know all the exciting stories about life that we tend to tell ourselves tend to die choosing my words carefully they tend to die when this is seen because 
you know, they're just so shadowy in comparison. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's there's no answer to that question. There are many answers to that question. We could give all of which are stories. Other than that, there's no answer. Why? I mean, I, I'm not sure if this is what you're getting at, but it might be relevant. You know, why should somebody be do lallying along through life, interested in that, this, that, and the other, going to the rugby, concerning themselves with politics, going to church, perhaps getting onto a spiritual path, da 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 da, da and then become seized with this. Mm. You know, and become seized with non-duality, whatever that means. Why should that happen? There's no possible sensible answer to that question. But, I mean, the core questions is your, you know, talk, talking about, yeah, the, the, the absolutely core questions that, you know, the mind might go to, you know, why is there something rather than nothing, obviously? Um, why is there sentience? You know, why is there experience? How can a physical universe produce sentience yeah how can the inanimate how can in an, an inanimate universe stuff produce life well, these are kind of a set, sort of essential core well, philosophical it, questions it, it even bit, it's just the, the, the fact that there is something yes yeah. why is there something rather than nothing? not even the why, because there is, seems like there is something, the fact that there is isness is uncomfortable. It's that, a bit of a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a little bit of a puzzle. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll definitely get to the bottom of it before this, the camera cuts out. Oh, yeah. We've, yeah. Got, we've got at least three minutes left. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say daunting or scary or whatever, though words were used but yeah oh fucking hell yeah that would get it what's that about i think it's partly about the fact that everything that has been experienced consciously at least up to that moment in life you know has been experienced by a self and it doesn't matter what this has done what it's read what it's thought what spiritual experiences it's had none of that it's all been experienced by a self so it's unimaginable what it can be like for this to be going on without it happening for itself it's just just assumed this has to happen for itself that is the total experience since there's been a kind of you know memory and consciousness so for that to disappear for, the, for there to be the recognition that this not only can go on perfectly satisfactorily with nobody there to experience it, and yet it's still going on, and not only can it, but it is, and not only is it, but in the story of time, it always has been like this. So everything that this thought it had experienced previously, none of that had been experienced by this self, because there was no self, that's what the shock is. That's the, oh, fucking hell. So I wouldn't say, I mean, anything it could anything could apply, but I wouldn't say scary. I wouldn't say daunting. I'd just say, wow, fucking hell. And part of the shock is the recognition of the impossibility, you know, of, of this ever getting that, you know, this self ever getting it and maybe if this self was a spiritual seeker which this one was you know all those years chanting the mantra trekking through the himalayas eating brown rice and dal in the ashram <laughs> worshiping the guru having my chakras opened developing my ability to see auras or whatever it might be none of that could possibly ever have any effect because this was never about the f phenomena or the experiences that were happening, you know, changing that, 
changing those experiences so that instead of just the experience of that tree over there, I have the experience of seeing the tree and the aura around it. Oh my God, I must be getting spiritually advanced now. I can see the auras around trees. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. It's just yeah. the perspective of the one who seems to be looking at the tree, with or without the aura, that that's non-existent. The tree, the experience of the tree, the existence of the tree, with or without the aura, is just happening not for anyone. There is no necessity for a person for all of this to be happening, or even for all of this to be experienced. That's can be a pretty big shock, yeah. yeah. The only shock that counts, really. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not really talking about, you know, you know, we're walking down the road and suddenly there's a screaming of air brakes and a horn behind us and a, oh, no, I it's know. not that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a kind of, shock, oh yeah. my God. And there can be laughter as well. I mean, there are quite a lot of descriptions of, you know, the seeing of this, where there's laughter, or at least a quiet chuckle. And that laughter can be about, you know, different things. But one of those things, I, one of the things I think it can be about is just the recognition of just how ridiculous all that looking and seeking and longing for the person to be able to, I mean, for the person, for example, to refine itself sufficiently, you know, so that it could become pure enough to see it. It's just so ridiculous. And that, you know, if, if, that's, if that's got in that kind of like, almost like in, well, timelessly, but in a split second, that can seem pretty funny as well, genuinely funny. It's like the ultimate joke, a joke of all jokes. It's not, that's not based on a memory. That's an ever present, it is seen, is it? I know when we're using, uh, but I mean, it's not like the, you're going, oh, well, I remember this experience of seeing that this is uh, all happening. This is, it's, well, it's, it's not based on an experience or an event or something, and then you're referring to that when you're talking to me, you're... It, unless physical death occurs, right, then, oh, it's very difficult to talk about this because, you know, because we're talking about, you know, experiences, which isn't it. But unless physical death occurs, I would say it is likely that, you know, what goes on in the story of time is transformed. But, yeah, that's pretty likely, right? But, you know, an event it can kind of you know, be described. And it is a, you know, it, it is a, a description given in retrospect. So in that sense, it's like a memory. I mean, it's a story, of course. I, I think what I'm going to say, and this is probably as misleading as anything else, but I can't think of anything more more accurate, is that, I mean, it's, it, the reason it's misleading is we can't talk about, you know, an event of seeing as having qualities, but because we have to converse yeah. and use language, I can't think of a better word. So something of the quality of that doesn't have any qualities, but something of the quality of that then remains in a transformation way. Yeah. But it seems to exist in a particular space, in a particular place, which yeah. is different to other places. Yeah. Right. So there are these two senses, but they're not experienced as two separate senses by the person. They're just ex experienced as this is, this is what it's like to be a person. Right. When this is seen, it may then be recognized that they are actually two different aspects of personhood, if you like. You know, a sense of, you know, contracted down 
into this self like some someone wearing a tight corset that I was talking about earlier and also there is this location in a particular space and in let's call it an event an awakening event or a seeing a non-duality event both of those can disappear so there's no contraction and there is also no sense of being in a particular location so if you like whatever is seeing this is everywhere and we could say in a way that the whole you know idea of space just collapses in that because if this is everywhere then everywhere is the same so there's no space if conventionally speaking this is both here and there then there is no here and there because it's the same we can't even call it a space. All we can say is it's, it is the same. Yeah. So in an event, there can be this complete loss of sense of both contraction and location. What seems to happen, usually, maybe not always, there may be cases where this doesn't happen, is that that sense of location comes back eventually. So once more, there seems to be, you know, a physical body located somewhere in something that can be regarded as space, rather than smeared out everywhere. But the sense of contraction is what leaves and doesn't come back. Did that make any sense at all? Well, I mean, uh the only way it can make sense is if I can refer, if I can relate to things that have happened. I, 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 as much as I can understand the exploding, uh, the, the, well, the seeing everywhere, seeing everywhere is impossible. That's impossible. Um, the, I can sense the physical. You see, then when I had the experience, I had the sense of um, it was just seeing in which this arises and then that's localized right back down to um, uh, me, me seeing with my eyes as opposed to the hear and seeing this didn't seem to be a difference between that so that's why I, I, all I can do is relate somewhat to what you're saying and, and say is that what you're talking about because I, could, I can only refer to my own sort of gig experience but so in that it was just this pure clean seeing I hate using the word pure and clean but let's just say I didn't even have but it felt like there was no wasn't even bad eyesight in that but you know what I mean and then it was back to local perspective right and, and eyes that see and blink. It was like he almost blinking appeared in the seeing, if you know what I mean. So it wasn't to do with I see or eyes, it was just seeing. Is that what you mean by local or everywhere seeing? It, it could be. Could be, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you're yeah, saying yeah. that, I'm thinking, yeah, this could be. Um, it's mean? a trouble with words, isn't it?
it's just gone really. Mm. To a realm of the sublime. Yeah. Mm. I've got fruit juice, so apple goes to the right now. Mm -hmm. The only thing I was going to say is um, it definitely reaches a point where you know um, questions just totally evaporate. Uh, just, just, just no questions. Yeah, it's not great for filming, is it? It's not great for filming, no. Yes. <laughs> but there's no. There isn't a, yeah, there isn't a question. There isn't a question that I haven't asked before. There isn't a, you know, a, uh, what do you say? I mean, this is a mystery. Mm. And, um, this striving to want to know what the mystery is or fill a gap that you don't even know what would what way the gap would be filled or what that would look like or you don't even really really want to because well you do you want to stop seeking and even you don't, I actually just don't know what you want really and then and it's not even a, you kind of everything just dries up into um So you're just back to the square one of what's happening and in what's happening there isn't an awful lot to be said about it unless you launch into a story mm. which and that you know that's there's no question there at the end of that little ramble mm. yeah it's very very unsatisfactory for the mind which is probably one of the reasons we make up all these other much more complicated stories about what the meaning of this is because surely it must have a meaning mm. and surely I must have a meaning and a destiny so we make up all the religious stories and the spiritual stories yeah so how would you describe what's happening here? <laughs> I think I would hesitate to, other than what I've just said. You know, that, that it's it's like it's this. You know that it, the dream 
you might have had last night, the memory you might have have of getting on the plane this morning, yeah, the experience or memory that you might have of what we were talking about a minute ago, ten seconds ago, half a second ago, what might happen in an hour's time, a minute's time, a second's time, and between all of that, which is quite clearly unreal, quite clearly unreal in the sense it is not existent at this moment except as a thought, a memory if you like, and then between that there is this incredibly translucent, evanescent stuff happening apparently, which is this moment, and even the word moment is misleading because you can't have a moment without duration, and this doesn't have any duration. Yeah, this... It can't have any duration. I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean, that's something which even the mind can get quite a good handle on that, not that that matters. And that this is the whole of existence. That shimmering something between nothing and nothing, apparently, apparently there. And then in that, all the thoughts and feelings which arise, which seem to give so much reality to the past and the future largely through our feelings about it as well as our thoughts and memories and hopes and expectations and fears. Yeah. But if the mind keeps going, it will keep generating. I mean, this is why we could pile the books of theology on each other, probably till they reach the moon. Yeah. Why there are ceaseless arguments in the Buddhist world as to what the Buddha meant by no self, and those arguments have been going on in the story of time for two and a half thousand years. Yeah. Because the mind is ceaseless and will never be satisfied. I should have watched the ways to spend an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there must be. I can't think of any right now, but there must be, sure. Yeah.